Braves of Oklahoma State has set the standard by which all big men are measured in the Big 8. Big Country, last year's Player of the Year, has played huge for the Cowboys. But now Country has company in his corral. Greg Ostertag has become a force for the Jayhawks inside. The Big O meets Big Country as KU and OSU collide next in the semifinals. Cowboys and the Jayhawks, who will take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers in tomorrow's final. As you have seen, Nebraska earlier today knocking off the top-ranked Missouri Tigers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Gary Thompson. And Gary, if history serves as any lesson, these two teams have played two overtime games. They have split those contests, so this one should be a dandy. Dave, I think this is going to be a throwback to the old days of Mr. Iba and Fog Allen. This is going to be a half-court possession game, defense, hand Handling the ball and shot selection are going to be the ingredients to win this ball game. So if you're watching this game at home, you might tweak your TV set, turn down the color, watch this one in black and white. That's the kind of game it's going to be. And we'll be back after these words from Miller Genuine Draft. In Oklahoma State, we're about set to get started here. Let's check out the Western Auto starting lineup for KU. Pearson and Scott are the forwards. Scott rejuvenated now. And Oster tag in the middle. Jock Vaughn and Steve Woodbury are the guards. Keanu Roberts Burley are the forwards for Oklahoma State. Reeves and Oster tag will watch that battle all day today. Rutherford and Thompson. Now, oh boy, with Vaughn and Woodbury, you got to say, these two teams have maybe the best guards in the conference. The officials for today, Stanley Reynolds, Denny Friend, Paul Jansen, and the standby official, is Scott Thornley. These two teams have met six times in the Big A tournament. Kansas holds a 5-1 series lead, including four straight. And we're back to Kemper after these were tip off just moments away. Kansas Jayhawks come in with a record of 25 and 6. Oklahoma State, 22 and 8. Roy Williams in his sixth year guiding the Jayhawks, and boy, he's got him going in the right direction. Attorney time again, Gary. They have won four straight, the Jayhawks, and Eddie Sutton has his club going in the right direction as well. Ranked 23rd in the country, the Cowboys have won six of their last seven. Both clubs doing exactly what you want to do, and that's Penny Strong as you come to the tail end of the season, hit tournament time. Well, who's going to play Nebraska? Will it be Oklahoma State or Kansas? Certainly, if you look at the regular season, we can't determine from that. These teams split the two games, both going overtime. And, Gary, those two games almost mirror images of themselves. They really did. In the two games, both clubs scored 42 field goals. Both were exactly the same from the foul line, 25 for 38. The Cowboys had 15 three-pointers, and Kansas, wow, they can't get any more even than that. Wow, what a start, though, for Reeves on the alley-oop. And he about brought down the house. Good matchup on the inside, Ostertag and Reeves. Reeves has not shot the ball well against Ostertag in the two meetings. Patrick Ritchie probably won't play today. He got banged up in yesterday's contest against Kansas State, falling hard on a layup. Pearson takes his spot in the starting lineup and a nice move. Could be a key player in the ball game. Pearson had 15 in the first ball game. So unlike our first half of our doubleheader, where both teams struggled to score early on, these two clubs come out and go right at each other. And when I say Pearson 15 in the first game, it's the first game of the Kansas-Oklahoma State Series this year. In that game, he had five plays. Ostertag says, get that out of here! And that out of here! Ostertag had five blocks to tie a tournament record last night. All of them in the first half. You know, it isn't very often that big country turns around and goes to shoot a shot, and he's got somebody bigger than him facing him. Yeah, the country said, you know, Ostertag has become a great player. He's big, he's strong, and, man, he battles you in there. You're right, uh, he doesn't have that kind of competition around the Big A Conference, so Ostertag can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. So Kansas with the ball. We've played a little more than a minute. We're tied at two. Cowboys going on the out-of-bounds. Ostertag up over country, but a little bit shy. Whoops. Thompson picked it up, picked up his dribble, so it's not a travel. Watch the defense. Both teams played magnificent defense last night. Now foul inside as Keontae Roberts tries to set the pick. That'll be the first foul on the freshman. Just expect this game. Both games have been decided in the 60-point range. You expect it to be a half-court basketball game. That's why I say defense and the ball handling and shot selection are really going to be important. 
important because possessions is so important in this ball game. I feel like you need to get the peach baskets out. That's right. <laughs> That's the way those other two games have gone, too. Good matchup there. Rutherford against Woodbury. Back by Gary at seven. And Scott is fouled by Burley. And Scott creates such a problem for so many teams. In the SEC, oh boy, man, this is upset Saturday. Kentucky over Arkansas by five. That's in the second half. Already Duke has lost today. North Carolina was trailing. Michigan lost to Northwestern. Nebraska beating Missouri. What's going on today? <laughs> I haven't heard the Michigan score. That is a surprise. Oh, the moon. <laughs> Richard Scott, who has struggled at the line, 47% of the year. UConn also lost today. They lose to Providence. Man, oh man. These teams evenly matched. This guy today could be a difference maker in this ball game. He played hurt. Both games only scored one point. He has been a difference maker for the Jayhawks on their recent resurgence, winning their last four. And it's been Scott, who has averaged nearly 20 points a game during that stretch, that has made the big difference. And that can make a difference right there, hitting those free throws. I should say. Hmm. Looks like you at the line there, hitting those two free throws. Thompson for three. Brooks Thompson cans the tray to give... Oklahoma State the one-point lead. Rick Thompson played very, very well in the two games. 23 and 18-point games. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> oh, wow. Rock Jock. <laughs> Jay Hawk. 6-5 KU. And Reed's really coming out high. They'll use him as a release pass against that pressure defense in the overplay. And here comes Vaughn. Getting it to the right guy, Pearson. Boy, Pearson, a nice job there, I think, of keeping away from an offensive foul. Instead of taking the basket, just kind of floated away and took the jumper. As you see, the other scores from other conferences. We'll continue to show you those so you can see what's going on around the country today. Here in Big 8 country, it's who's going to play Nebraska in tomorrow's championship game of the Phillips 66 Big 8 tournament. Kansas or Oklahoma State. Good pass, Scott. Oh, what a block from behind. Save by a big country, and here comes Randy Rutherford. Not a good shot. He should have either pulled up and taken the jumper or tried to take it on the drive all the way. But Kansas leading by three, has the ball. That's what I'm talking about in this game. Each possession is going to be so important, that shot selection. Richard Scott again. It's that man-for-man -man defense. Good spin dribble that time. And that's off Roberts putting out of bounds. We have a timeout. 15.52 to go till halftime. Jock Vaughn and the Jayhawks celebrating a much chagrined Sutton, his club trailing by five. For the seventh year in a row, Phillips 66, proud to be the official sponsor of the Big A tournament. After the game or anytime you fill up, do it with super clean unleaded gasolines only from Phillips 66, the performance company. With Gary Thompson, I'm Dave Armstrong. We're at Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Second half of our doubleheader today, Kansas with the early lead and the ball. From the Big Ten, Indiana, no upset there. Early in the ball game has really been playing well. Perfect last night from the field. Continues that great shooting from the outside. Or I should say, Gurley red hot. Man, oh man, is Gurley on fire. And Kansas has exploded to an eight-point lead. Gurley now 13 in his last 16 from outside the arc. Wow. Reeves and a foul. Foul on Pollard, his first. Country has his second bucket of the game. 
with moments ago. Here's Gurley coming here. Pollard on the inside. Good entry pass by Furley. He spins, goes up. Pollard tries to keep his hands out of there, but nicks him a little bit on the elbow. And now Country will try to make the three-point play. Timmy Dykes was pointing out yesterday, uh, Gary, that you really need to try to force Reeves the other way. He really yeah. likes to spin the one way, and we want to get him to go to the left. It's not easy to do with a seven-footer no. to get him to go where you want him to go. <laughs> Good heads up play by the big freshman, Pollard. He doesn't play like a freshman as far no. as basketball <laughs> smarts, does he? Well, as they say, at this time of the season, they're beyond that freshman mentality. Yeah. Moved up closer to sophomore. Yeah, you're right. He's had a lot of quality minutes. Scott this sucking back in there in the middle off of Burley trying to help protect with Reeves and giving him that shot. Pollard doing a good job stealing off with the rebound. Quickly to get it down to Woodbury. Now flashing out to Gurley. Good cover up by Collins. Thompson trying to steal it away. And earlier let's take a look at our MCI proof positive replay as Richard Scott can get free inside. And nobody can steal off as well as he can right there. You see the bump it just gets a good position, puts it down for two. As I said, I think he can be a difference maker in this game, Richard Scott. He has been so far. Scott already with a half dozen. 15-7, Kansas. Williams taken away by Sutton. Here comes Manzer. Good double down by Sutton right there. Sutton in the ball game, a great ball handler, passer. to center court, not over and back. It was kicked out by Kansas. Kansas really swarming back when it goes into Reeves. This time they're a little late getting there. Ooh. Look out there. You know, always worried you see him going down where they step on a foot. Powell's going to be called on B.J. Williams. Came in from behind to block it away. And don't forget, join us at halftime. We'll update Big 8 Conference women's basketball on our Volkswagen women's halftime report. Brian Reeves back to the line. Reeves did not shoot well from the line in yesterday's game against Iowa State. The Cowboys took a 21-point halftime lead in that contest, only to allow the Cyclones to pull to within three, and then the Cowboys went on to win it by 10. But some scary moments for these Cowboy cheerleaders. We talked about the free throw shooting at Big Country. Prior to last night's game, he hit 75% of his last 49 free throws last night. Five for 14. Mm. And he told us after the game that he was working hard on that part of the game, needed to do a better job. And so far he has two for three today. Six point Kansas lead, 13 30 left to go, first half. And he's moving that basketball, try to get to that wing and enter down low. From the ACC, uh, the uh, mild upset in the making, close at halftime. You notice both teams are trying to push the ball down the floor, alert, looking for that fast break. If it's not there, if they don't have the good shot off of it, they're going to bring it back and set it out. And this guy has been playing lights out as of late. I should say he's averaging 11 points over his last five games. Well, in the first two games, the bench, Manzer, Pierce, Sutton, and Collins did not score against this Kansas ball club. So Manzer is another key player for the Cowboys. Boy, if you're a young kid, you watch him shoot the jumper free throws. He is almost perfect, I think. He gets the elbow in. He's got great rotation of the ball. Knocked out of bounds. And off Pierce, and it will go to Kansas. Fresh substitutes. Reeves doesn't get a lot of uh, time on the bench. That's the one advantage that Kansas has by alternating Pollard and Ostertag. So he's always got to go country against a fresh player. Early checks back in. Ostertag in there along with Calvin Rayford. Richard Scott checking back in. And so, so too Sean Pearson. <laughs> no, no, a muscle maybe. Yeah. Not quick, no. 
Holster tag calling for that ball to go to the wing. It's the shot clock. Rafer forced to put it up with four on the shot clock. Look at both clubs recovering real well. These teams, as I said, pushing the ball down fast, trying to find an open where they get a cheap basket, but the defensive team's recovering, getting back. Manzer again, no. Oster tag kept it alive for Pearson. Manzer forced that one. He had his hand right in his face for to put it up high off the board. And this guy, oh. Scott tried to rip it away from Collins, goes right to Burley. Well, when Gurley shoots it, you're really surprised more when he misses. As I was going to say, it looks good every time. Yeah. Hands is trying to really overplay in the passing lane, making it tough. That's been forcing Reeves to come out. Reeves comes out there and now has eight first half points. Pearson, whoa, well off target, an air ball. Arizona State, they're the lead on Arizona. Man, man, something's in the wind. Most of the time made his presence felt that time. Reeves didn't get the shot down, but right now, Reeves is getting the ball too easy. He's had seven shot attempts already here in the nine minutes of play. If you look at him side by side, and that's a big side by side, <laughs> if you look at him like that, it looks like Ostertag a little bit bigger than Big Country. In fact, Big O was telling us, hey, I'm not Big O, I'm Big World. If he's Big Country, I'm Big World. <laughs> nice day by Big Country. Sutton's going to save that one, say, let's calm down. Quickness of Rafer that time almost stole that basketball from Manzer. Cowboys have crept back to within two after trailing by eight. Collins for the tie. And the Cowboys have come all the way back. Scott leveled. And Manzer went flying by. That's a belly flop, wasn't it? He just dived right over the ball. Another from Pearson and a push on Sutton. Roy Williams not happy because Oklahoma State on an 8-0 run. Eddie Sutton's Cowboys have tied the score 15. And take the Gillette three-point challenge, flip the coupon in tomorrow's newspaper, go to a participating retailer, see if you've won a shot at a million bucks. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. 15 all our score here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City with Gary Thompson. I'm Dave Armstrong. Semi-final action in the Phillips 66 Big A Conference Tournament. Nebraska awaits the winner of this one. And look at this. Uh, Indiana, an easy winner over Wisconsin. But look at this from the SEC semifinal. Arkansas looks like they're going to be knocked off. Surprise there. And look out. No, Crippen wasn't anywhere close. Our associate producer last night, he wouldn't take the charge. And again today, he bailed out on us. Good I, thought, by I thought good coaching, Gary, would get him back in the game, but man. He doesn't take coaching. I found that out before. <laughs> oh, boy. Mel, you might be off the team for tomorrow's championship game. We're going to have to discuss things. Burley counted, and he's fouled. Burley's had a tough time against these Jayhawks, scoring four out of 15, but good ball reversal this time. You see him put it up, gets it down. Burley, another one of good bodies, Gary. Yeah. Like, really. The only thing about Burley, I think, is that he's been a little inconsistent in his play. He's had some good big moments, through. you're right, but other games where he seems to disappear. Three-point Oklahoma State lead, their biggest. An 11-0 run by the Cowboys. When Woodbury has not had a shot, Randy Rutherford defensively on the all-defensive team, as is Woodbury, but... Woodbury gives it up for Rayford. Got to hit those shots from the corner, and he's not been able to do that, and they don't respect Calvin because of that. Flipping down, and Rayford slow in getting up. Yeah. 
slipped on some perspiration down there. Woodbury was about to get his first shot there when Thompson really came over and helped out. Zach Vaughn not completely healthy. Roy Williams told us before the game that Vaughn's back is bothering him some. Well, we're pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and their nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. Cowboys have turned this game around. Down eight, now up three. Look at the overplays. Sooner or later, you have to get something in there. I think you go back door, take off that pressure. Oh, there's a good reverse. And a basket, Keontae Roberts, the freshman. Keontae Roberts has been a nice player all year long, but since he started, he's been more effective than ever. This is a great move right there. So Roberts will try to complete the three-point play. Oklahoma State, a nifty turnaround. Roberts, no runs. Roberts with 10 last night. That was his second best scoring effort of the season. Now a five-point Cowboy lead. You can't defend speed. So that stops the 13-0 run by the Cowboys, but back door, blocking foul. Pearson too far underneath the hoop. Well, MCI proved positive that when Jacques Vaughn wants to head to the paint, he goes for it. Look what happened. Ian Phillips was out there protecting, and. Jock Vaughn just took it right to the basket. There's nobody to protect her umbrella there defensively. Good read by the freshman. And Pearson picked up his last foul. Pearson with four already. First freshman to start a season for the Kansas Jayhawks since Danny Manning. Pretty good company. Yes, it is. That last time we just talked about the back cuts or that overplay and the pressure. That makes that defender think about it the next time when he's going to get up and overplay. Well, prefer the best free throw shooter on the Cowboy team. And he nails them both. So the Cowboys are giving the Kansas all they can handle. We're back after these words from Schick. Let's look at our sprint assistant coach. This is Brian Reeves shooting. Remember again, the orange are the makes. And that's where you expect him to be scoring, right down there on the block. No three-point shots in that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And here's a look at what Reeves can do and what Ostertag can do to create some problems. Yep. One of those white basketballs there, one of those misses. It's a little bit different shooting over Ostertag. Ostertag now guarding Richard Scott. Kansas moving the ball. Woodbury, as I said, has not had a shot. Glass shot, Vaughn. You know, he looked off the defenders. He made that cut there. The wing defender did not come at him because Jock Vaughn was looking him off, and that was a tough shot, high off the glass. I should say. Oh, it looked like Roberts had him. Right? Reeves on the inside, lucky not to go there. He's got it now. Him the other way, and Reeves cannot convert. And look at Jock Vaughn go in the paint again. Here's this wing defender. See, he looks him off as if he's going to pass out there, and that froze Rutherford. Let him take his cut to the basket. Vaughn already with a half dozen. 22 19, our score. going to have to become more active offensively for Kansas. One point ball game now. Both teams have enjoyed leads. Kansas 8, Oklahoma State 5. The Cowboys now with a one point lead. Good help defensively for Kansas. Look at this yeah. game. This is fun. Shot clock at 9. 
attack and recover defensively. Look at Josh Vaughn. He's all over Thompson. Off the foot of Gurley. Here comes Josh Vaughn. He walked. Oh, wait, a technical. A technical call on Brooks Thompson. He said something to Paul Jansen as he went flying by, and Jansen heard it. right here what he said Brooks was complaining that it hit his foot now watch right there he's saying hit his foot it hit his foot <laughs> and Jansen right there boom technical well the first thing as a player you want to do Thompson forget about the fishing get back and protect you might be following up he missed the layup and you get a key rebound and he knows about that because he followed a missed shot at Iowa State for the winning basket early missed the first on the technical fouls Sometimes the temper gets to Thompson, and I think he's frustrated by Jock Vaughn. That's the first foul on Thompson. Early hits one of two at the line, so Thompson gets a rest, and Eddie Sutton saying, hey, uh, I gotta settle my guy down. I don't want him out there getting another foul quickly, so he'll pull him out and let him cool off a little bit. We're tied at 22. Under six to go, first half. Well, just the kind of game you thought it would be, yeah. Gary. <laughs> got three turnovers for the Cowboys and four for Kansas. Again, they're taking care of the basketball. Vaughn getting it into Scott. Yep. He stepped on the baseline and threw it away. Only one of those turnovers will count against him. <laughs> Roy Williams saying, come on now, let's settle down. Roy told us that second half of last night's game against Kansas State, not a good performance. Their first half, an excellent performance. That's when they put the game away, leading by 21 of the Wildcats in that first half. The Wildcats could just not mount a challenge. Scott Pierce, the transfer from Illinois, hits his first bucket. We mentioned before, uh, those reserves have not scored in those first two ball games. Pierce has been playing excellent for defense and rebounding. Gets two, and there's the big guy. He's going to get excited now. Around the world with <laughs> Big World. I told uh, Big O, I said, I'll call you whatever you want. You're seven feet tall. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Watch Ostertag. He's calling for the ball. Now he comes to the other side, gets a great entry pass right there, and jams it down. He had a big ball game in the last one in Stillwater, 18 points and 13 rebounds. Mm. That was Gurley on the pass. Boy, the ball put right on the money where you can handle it. Here comes the trap. Manzer finds Reeves. It's a back out of Manzer for three. Pierce. Jock Vaughn down there to tie up will favor Oklahoma State. I think Pierce was trying to kick that out to a teammate. Couldn't get a hold to get out. He finally just grabbed on, and that's a smart move. At least you get the tie up. The arrow was pointing towards the Cowboys. Williams out there, boy. Taking care of all the perspiration down on the floor. There's a battle here for these rebounds. Manzer, I talk about that good release. Pierce gets inside, slips, goes down. Watch, he's looking, trying to get it out. Gets blocked, and then he grabs and hangs off. Well, the Jayhawks have a chance to go back in the lead. The score tied at 24. Three guys. 
Ellinger tried to tip it to Keontae Roberts. Probably should have just grabbed it. Out to Vaughn for three. Well strong and air ball. In the reeds. He would have counted had it gone. An Oster tag whistled for the foul. I think right now that ball getting in there too easy to Reeves. That was a long pass. Nobody dropping back. Let's watch it. Look at that pass in there from that distance. Reeves comes back, turns, and this time Ostertag with the hand going in, and Reeves says, oh, I should have had one. Reeves does a great job, Gary, of getting himself in the position he wants to be in, in that paint. Well, and he's like Scott in that he's got the strength. He can just hold people off. Tough to get around. Reeves, much better job at the free throw line here today. Big country, three of four from the line, three of nine from the field. Has to put him in double figures with ten. He does it. So 3:14 to go to the break in a game just like we thought it would be. 26-25. We're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Good execution usually leads to good things. Let's watch Kansas right now as they go down. Jock Vaughn, there's the entry pass, goes up. Reeves was starting over there to help, and then Ostertag over the top. Did not check him out right there, and the big guy went right over the top and tipped it in. So we're tied at 26, a little over three minutes to go till halftime. Two lowest scoring games for the Cowboys this year have both come against Kansas. <laughs> both those games went into overtime, and they still didn't get as many points in their other games. Both teams, excellent defense. Look at That's why these two teams are probably going to go away in the NCAA tournament. That's right, and that's why against each other in the two games, they've only shot 38 and 37 percent against each other. It's tough to get a good shot. Hey, you said Ostertag didn't have the speed. Look at him track that one down and then to Gurley, but Woodbury. Ostertag! You know, an Ostertag stayed away from that first one. It was hanging cylinder he went up backed off of it went back up again and got it down Oster tag now with a half dozen you got to feel like if you can just equalize country yeah you are really a big advantage there the 100 three-pointer for brooks thompson this year his second today i think that's something that uh, cowboys are going to have to have a little bit more perimeter shooting so the Cowboys back with a one-point lead. This one's going overtime, Gary. I'm predicting it now. <laughs> would that be something? Three overtime games in one season? It would not surprise me. Good crossover dribble. Nice drop off. This is, oh, he doesn't get it, but there's the follow again. Well, he just wanted the big O to get a rebound and another two points. Boards are killing him. Cowboys right now, even though only trail by one point, Kansas hanging in. A rebound advantage for Kansas is huge. Nine rebounds for Ostertag, and the rebound advantage 22 to nine for KU. Ostertag has as many rebounds as the entire team. Brooks Thompson off of him and out of bounds. But boy, good hustle by Brooks to stop that play from going the distance. Got Pierce checking in as we look at earlier action underneath the KU basket. Who rims in and out, and there's the follow. Doesn't get it. Watch Ostertag. He goes up here, stays away from it, now comes back up the second time. If he gets on it that first time, it's going to be basket interference. It must be nice to stand on your tip and toes and reach your ball at the rim. Look at that defense that last time there. Pierce, and boy, the, the offside helps. Scott Sutton he doubles back in there, just takes any kind of drive away. Woodbury, his second bucket now, Steve Woodbury. And shot a lot today, just four shots, he's knocked two of them down. You know, you'd like, I think, to have him have more shots, but the key for him, he's got patience, he's not forcing anything, and it, that's better than just putting them up. Well, that was a minute and 38 to go, Kentucky's gonna upset Arkansas. Reeves is fouled by Pollard. Going to the line again. Four of five today at the strike. Boy, 
Uh, his uh, scoring average, if he can shoot about 80%, I and mean, it's in the upper 20s. Reeves getting the ball again, turning to that outside. Right, Pollard says, no, I didn't get him. <laughs> well, very rarely a guy admits it. Yeah, yeah, that was me. <laughs> It's like getting stopped for a speeding ticket. Well, officer, I thought I was scoring 55, but I just didn't notice it. Because I had the cruise, had the cruise on, too. Yeah, right, right. Couldn't have been over. Cruise must have been busted. I would have told him to heard that story a few times. And Reeves hits the second. Kansas lead. The Jayhawks will be able to go for the last shot of the first half. You see the time remaining in the first half as Jocelyn goes to work. He likes to take that last shot. Well, sure well after the uh, buzzer, that will do it. First half comes to a close, much like a first half we thought we'd see with Oster Tag and Big Country battling. And right now it's the Jayhawks who have the advantage by two at the half. This is the Big A Conference Basketball Tournament, and it's brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of high-quality, super-clean athletic gasoline and Trump Arctic all-season premium motor oil. The Big A Basketball Tournament on Raycom is brought to you in part by Volkswagen. By American Cyanamid Agri-Centers. And by Stats, Kansas shooting 45%, Oklahoma State 42%. Gary, that narrow difference is the two-point difference in this first half. <laughs> They've been actually shooting the ball better in this game than they did the previous two. He said they were down in the 30s. And a rebounding story. Big advantage for the Jayhawks. Now that's one of the difference Kansas State in there. You can think back to four or five follow shots that they made. Ostertag leading the way there. Greg Ostertag with nine first half boards as we check the Ford game plan for the second half. Well, I think for Kansas, they got to deny Reeves the ball. He had 13 shot attempts in that first half alone. Scott and Woodbury, they're going to have to get involved more offensively. Oklahoma State, they're going to have to have some perimeter shots. They haven't been getting him. And tougher on the boards, we just saw where they've really been out rebounded. Well, our sprint assistant coach will show you Kansas shooting. And remember, again, the orange balls are the makes. And we talked about that offensive rebound. I remember Ostertag alone had two or three follows. And Scott, so they've got to toughen up. Kansas doing a good job of getting the ball down low. That looks right now they're ready to smother yeah. that basket. There's not much room left around the rim. That's why the percentage is a little bit better in this game this afternoon than the two previous. Gary, if you're a Cowboy fan out there watching this game, this is an ominous stat for you. Kansas this year, when they have the halftime lead, and you see they do, Kansas this year 21-0 with the halftime lead. Have not lost yet. Spells bad news, doesn't it? Well, maybe... Uh, either that or you can say, well, they're due. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we'll see if stats are... Uh, you know, lying or telling the truth here. Woodbury ready to go back to work. He didn't take many shots in that first half. Well, it's Eddie uh, Sutton's birthday today. Maybe the Cowboys will want to give him a birthday present, and they'll pick it up here a little bit in the first half and uh, make it 20, what was it, 21? <laughs> yeah, 21. 21 and 1, maybe they'll make it. That was tipped. It wouldn't have been over and back. Rutherford uh, had the ball tipped away. Thompson saved it anyway. And Thompson for another three. At two in the first half. Just a little short on that one. Oster tag wanted it, got it, and put it in. Big move by Big O. Oster tag really looking great, and he had Reeves backed in there, clear in the paint when he received that ball. All he had to do is turn and put it in. I think Big O really enjoys and relishes his meeting with the country. Uh, a lot of times he gets lost in games where he's playing someone like a, a Cunningham from Kansas State because he doesn't know what to do. But boy, against Big O, he's got another big body to go up against. Thompson missing again. There's Richard Scott now. Vaughn on the break with Pearson. Nice 
beautiful job of getting out. We talked about these teams trying to run. I think actually Kansas tried to run a little bit more, getting out and looking for that cheap one. If it's not there, then they're backing it out and getting into that half-court game. First four points of the second half belong to KU. Burley had it blocked by Oster by just standing there like a house by the side of the road. Woodbury left him open, and the Hawks are hot. That's one way to get freed up is in that transition game. Cowboys a timeout. Makers of high quality, super clean, unleaded gasoline and Trump Arctic all season premium motor oil. The Big 8 basketball tournament on Raycom is brought to you in part by Ford. By Schick. And by Miller Genuine Draft. Kemper Arena, Kansas City. Reeves wants the ball, gets it. First six points of the second half have belonged to the Jayhawks. 38-30 our score. Kansas with the lead. Reeves again. Nice hook. And Eddie Sutton at a timeout. He's got Sutton and Manzer in there at guards. I don't think he was happy with his starting guards. He, their decisions, and right away they get inside the big country. Woodbury, an offensive rebound and the putback. Cowboys are going to have to put a body on somebody and get them off those boards. Oh, boards have been the story. 27-10 the advantage for KU. Oster tag. That's not where Roy Williams wants him to foul if he's going to foul at all. Oster tag now with his ninth double-double of the year. Pretty good whistle by Roy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've never had the ability to do that. I never Neither I that. go. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I can never do that loud whistle. Larry Brown, remember, he used to stomp yeah. his heel on the court. Manzer, that's a three. There's some of that perimeter shooting we're talking about. This guy, gosh, I like the form he's got. He really looks great shooting a basketball. Really come on strong to the Cowboys down the stretch. He's closing out his senior campaign in style. Here's Scott down in the box. Forced his way up. And he is fouled by Burley. When you talk about Scott, you talk about one of the premier guys being able to seal his man off. And guys outside are delivering that ball. Now they have confidence. You know, if you see him right there, he's got Burley right behind him. He pumps it up, gets him up in the air, and then he's always smart enough to take it right up and draw that foul. Great guy. Gets his leg spread. He's a big target for the wingmen to throw that ball into. Richard Scott, a former member of the Bill Clinton campaign for president. In fact, uh, President Clinton sent him a Letter of congratulations on senior day at Kansas. Last game at Allen Fieldhouse. Well, I guess he and Eddie Sutton then have something in common. Sutton has slept in the White House. A former coach at Arkansas, Sutton, and he and Clinton, good friends. Keeping things balanced and equal. Good politician, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Six-point Kansas lead. Comes the trap. And picked up by Woodbury. Woodbury for three. Now yeah, Kansas going for the jugular here early. Man's are just talking to Sutton as he gets the ball. He says, my fault, my fault. Boy, Eddie Sutton came flying off that bench. He was the top of your screen there. And man, was he hot at his team after that last series. Man's are another three. Made good, though. After that turnover, he got his coach to sit down. Good job of Deontay Roberts just penetrating and forcing the defense to pick up here. He can pitch it out. Look at look at Oster tag reaching above everybody. The big O has got some adrenaline going. Look at that ball. In and out. Look at him reach once, twice. Now he gets it back with both hands. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you like that hustle. <laughs> got it? Here, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> wants it again. is fouled on his way to the hoop. That one on Keontae Roberts. Well, 
the seventh year in a row. Phillip 66, proud to be the official sponsor of the Big A tournament. After the game, or any time you fill up, do it with super clean and leaded gasolines. Only from Phillip 66, the performance company. With Gary Thompson, I'm Dave Armstrong. We're at Kemper Arena, semi-final action, the Phillips 66 Big A Tournament. Pearson going to the line. Sean Pearson, a good three-point shooter, but I guess uncharacteristic for him, not a very good free-throw shooter, just under 60% of the year. Well, you know, it's hard to figure out that, isn't it? Where you can hit it from the three-point line and have trouble at the, the foul line. One thing they've been talking about three-point shots, they've been working with him thinking about driving to the basket more. Don't just think about the three-point shot. Take it to the hole. Rebound a little bit more. Four-point Kansas lead. Yeah, almost lost the handle. Got it back. Reeves down low on those blocks. Kansas trying to pressure on the outside people to make it tough to get it inside. But Oklahoma State doing a good job. And again, Reeves is getting the ball. And the Cowboys have come back again. Trailing by eight this half. Oklahoma State has come to within two. And I think this guard pattern and what they've done is they're concentrating on getting that ball inside where Eddie Sutton wants it. Kicked out, reset the shot clock. And we're watching that battle of the big men. Look how wide open he is right now. And he's got Ostertag field right behind him. Now they have a long ways to come to help. It can't get there. He turns to the baseline and knocks it down. I'm going to have to give him a little bit more weak side help. And Reed picked off by Sutton. Bad pass by Jacques Vaughn. So now Oklahoma State with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. And there is the three. No. And a foul on Gurley going for the rebound. That's with 3.22 to go from the ACC. 3.22 to go. Wake Forest kicked me a break over North Carolina. My goodness. You know, I haven't seen Wake Forest play, but I heard some commentators talking about them. Watch out for them in the mm -hmm. tournament, they said. They're a very good basketball team. Don't you know the guys on the selection committee over at the Hyatt? Are right. Right. They're, they're going nuts. What are we going to oh, do? Oh, we got this team here. We got, no, no, scratch him out. Put him on another bracket. Man, their erasers are flying up there. Good ball move by the Cowboys right here. And a good steal by Gurley and stolen back by Collins. Collins a good role player. Manzer for a three. Penetration in here in the middle draws the defense back right there. And Manzer is wide open for the shot again. He gets hit after the shot, drains it, and a chance for a four point play. Boy, is the bench on yeah. fire! I love to see that benches. I love to see the kids that are sitting there watching, ready to play, to be up and into that game. And then if you are a guy that gets off that bench, you are ready when it comes your time. All part of being a team player. So now Oklahoma State with a run to take a two-point lead. Kansas came out, scored the first six of this half, and it's been all Oklahoma State. He's followed on the blow post. Too strong from Calvin Rayford. All in Kansas City, winners of the Phillips 66 Super Clean Sweepstakes are staying at the Adams Mark Hotel. First prize winners stay at the beautiful Radisson Resort Hotel in Scottsdale, Arizona. Roy Williams wants to talk things over. He's taking a timeout with Oklahoma State surging ahead. Let's take a look at the sprint assistant coach, and this is Brendan Manzer, who has lit it up this half. Well, he had 12 points, two in the first half, 10 now, and all three of those trades that you see there are by Manzer. We talked about getting the perimeter shooting. The penetration to the basket is opening him out on the outside. I said he's got a great release, and he's knocking him down. Boy, is he ever. He's getting more PT, man. Brendan Manzer taking the place of Brooks Thompson in this game and doing the job. He's come alive this half. Yeah, it's been Manzer and Sutton off the bench. When they went down 38 to 30, Eddie Sutton with a timeout and inserted those two guards and they started going down to Reeves. And then a foul down low on 
Pierce trying to keep B.J. Williams away from the action. Pierce, the transfer from Illinois. Look at that ball in deep to Reeves again. Up and over the top. He is dynamite when he gets it down in that area. A good hustle by Pierce defense of that time. Hudson over to take Williams away from the low post. Great drive. Ooh, wow. That was a, some kind of drive by Pearson. You know, we had talked about just earlier about Kansas working with him to try and add the drive to his ball game, and not just sit out there and shoot three-point shots. But over the last five minutes, Oklahoma the draft has outscored Kansas 16 to 6. Oh, Sutton was looking for the lob. And Reeves fouled again. Boy, he is a load inside. We mentioned also about Kansas is having a tough time of shutting the ball off on the inside. Watch here. Here's Sutton. He comes over to make it a better angle on the pass inside. Now a gate step through on the defense as they come over to double with the help. Good reaction by Big Country Reeves. The manager will check out. Oklahoma State contingent sitting behind the Cowboy bench gives him big cheer. Brendan Manzer sparking the Cowboys with three trays this half. 12 points in the game, and now country. And Reeves, six of eight from the foul line right now, and Roy Williams probably saying, where's that five for 14 night you had last night? Sutton said Reeves had a better year this year than last year because of the competition and the fact that he didn't get lost out there. People knew about him. You know, I told him that, and they worked out. I said, uh, I think you've had an even greater year uh, this year because you've had people doubling down on you. And I think that's what you're talking about, uh, not being lost. Uh, last year's kind of surprise type of thing, and uh, doing it under a lot of pressure. you gotta, you got to give the Cowboys a lot of credit uh, for being able to get the ball into it. Doc Hawk, you see, they're down to eight. Pearson. His body's all over the place. Collar blocked by Big Country. Collins is not healthy. He is uh, hobbling right now. He jammed something and he fell over some bodies down there. And now Collins is going to have to come out of the game. Collins a starter earlier in the year until the freshman came along. Deontay Robertson comes back in the ball game. Well, this is the ACC semifinal. That's with a minute 15 to go, folks. <laughs> oh, my. Now let's see what happened to Collins. And he just kind of fell over, and then Howard came over and tripped over him. When Woodbury steps in, and that shot probably caught a foot there. We're blocked out. The Cowboys have done a good job of ball reversal. There's the skip. Another skip. Wide open Burley. Great ball movement. Ball not touching the floor with the dribble. Tripped up. Not a good pass again. And here come the Cowboys one more time. Six point Cowboy lead. It's their biggest. Reeves again if he wants to go there. Oh, that's a great block. Blocked by Scott. Reeves saved it out of bounds. Reeves getting up slow. He's okay. He's coming back down the court. Tried to sneak it into Oster, tagging off his belly and out of bounds. You know, Dave, these are always little things you see Reeves grimacing. But there was Thompson again who got back into the driving lane and kept Woodbury from getting a good hook right there. <laughs> Spin around and in the block by Scott. Watch him go down. That's the load, the fall. <laughs> oh, man. The cameraman down there almost mad, almost uh -oh. got nailed down there. Oh, Reeves. <laughs> Burley jams at home. Big run by the Cowboys to take an eight-point lead. Jayhawks have to settle down right now. I think look at Scott down and lower Woodbury trying to get in the action. Third foul on Brooks Thompson. And I think Woodbury's a little frustrated right now offensively. He saw his reaction there after the foul. 
Well, now with Reeves gone and Ian Phillip in, how long will Reeves have to sit on this bench? Boy, I would think Ostertag could really have a huge presence now in this game for KU. Ostertag and Scott as well. Reeves was holding on his right elbow. Woodbury. He's in double figures now with 10. Yeah, you look, you keep looking for him to step up, but I think he's going to have to. 11.08 to go. Here comes Woodbury. You know, I don't think Eddie Sutton's going to be happy uh, with that pass. Just going into Eon Phelps, who hasn't been doing much scoring, is in there for relief. I think he's going to work it around and go to some other people while he's in there. Reeves came over and said, Coach, I don't care what you want to do. I'm, I'm going in. He looked down and said, Coach, I'm going in. Okay, all right, all right. There I go. <laughs> all right, go on in. <laughs> kind of like Ostertag telling me he wants to be called Big World. Well, all right, big fella, get in there. Well, Kansas moved the ball now. There's the pick for Woodbury. They free him up, and I think they got to get a little bit more from him like that. Some shots. Hit the last two. Five straight by Woodbury. And Kansas pulling back to within three. Burley. No. Tipped out by who? It'll stay with Oklahoma State. Tipped out by Woodbury. Take the Gillette three-point challenge, flip the coupon. Tomorrow's newspaper, go to a participating retailer to see if you've won a shot at a million bucks. No purchase necessary. And void where prohibited. Cowboys with the ball in the three-point lead. Nearing the halfway mark of the second hand. Hey, this is an excellent basketball game. Just a chess match with two, two great coaches going back and forth, making adjustments. There's that penetration again. Early a three! Brett Burley has only hit 17 of those all year. Well, in the outside shooting, three-point shooting has come alive here for the Cowboys. Now six out of 12 for the ball game. Woodbury, he's taking the game over now for Kansas. Steve Woodbury trying to bring his club back. And Keontae Roberts whistled for the foul. Roberts now has four personals, Gary. E.J. Williams checking back in. Robert stays in there for the moment, but you got a feeling Eddie Sutton's going to go to his bench. Key four, I was going to say, with four fouls on him, and you've got Collins, I don't know what shape he is in right now. So they're going to bring Scott Sutton off their bench. Woodbury hits the free throw. Jayhawk fan, obviously, there. Uh, Five-point Cowboy lead. Scott Sutton, the youngest of the Sutton boys. Sean, also a member of this team, as an assistant coach. three-point shots. So Oklahoma State gets the ball back now with nine and a half to go in this one and a five-point Cowboy lead. Both teams have had leads of as much as eight. Rutherford for three, well short. Jock Vaughn wants to push it. To Woodbury for three. And we said, easy way to free up player in transition. Woodbury's going to get it. He's been coming through right now. He's been handling the ball. Almost every possession, Woodbury's been involved offensively. 
Woodbury almost single-handedly bringing the Jayhawks back. The Cowboys can't forget what has got them that lead, and that's going inside. Big Country Reeves, if he's bottled up there or doubled up, he's kicking back outside. Rutherford, no. Too big country. That was long rebound, so tough. Off the three-point misses. And I'm going to say the Cowboys, I think you need to look back down inside. Spread it out. Well, they had good spacing. There it is. In and out, no. But the big rebound. Now the Cowboys doing a better job on the glass. Thompson hits the big three. Great offensive rebound. Kept that possession alive. Flip pass. That'll be good. Cannon, and he's fouled. See what that penetration does. It just forces defense to react, particularly when you get two like these. They're taught so well, these teams, to come off and help. Watch it. Right in here, and the presence right now, the vision. Flip pass right there. And then the strength to take it up and horse it down for two, and he's excited. That's a gift, isn't it, Jacques Vaughn? To be able to see the whole court the way he sees it. Great job for a freshman. Or a senior. Like, <laughs> like playing like a sophomore yeah. now. <laughs> Ostertag now with a dozen trying to go to a lucky 13 for him. And he does. And that pulls the Jayhawks back to within three, two. Make it 58-56 our score. Kansas was trailing by eight just a moment ago. And now fresh substitutes for KU. We headed for that third overtime, Dave? Oh, yeah. I called it a long time <laughs> ago. Right. Oh, def definitely. I haven't had an overtime in the tournament yet. Why not? Two-point game with under eight to go. Man, it looks like they're trying to come with a trap. Andrew sparked to come back to the Cowboys in the second half, back in there again. A three-guard lineup now for Oklahoma State. Roberts with the foul trouble. They've had to go to a little different alignment. Kansas had Oklahoma State pressure to clear out here almost to miss court. With one on the shot clock. Pollard, good rebound. Manzo does have a quick release, but he had to release that extra quick that time to beat the shot clock. Vaughn will track it down. Woodbury says, hey, 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 let's settle down. Boy, Kansas, you can just see them come on after they've got a couple of buckets from Woodbury. Oh, great speed again inside. And he's fouled. Richard Scott taking it right to the big country land. What do you expect your big time players to do it? And Woodbury is stepping up right now. Watch here. Goes up and he finds the open man to Scott. Country coming late. Gets it down and Country's mad at himself for not getting it blocked. Watch it again. Picks his way. Cut off. Knows where the man's going to be when Country leaves back in the inside. Wide open. So Richard's got a chance to give KU the lead again. Good game, huh? That's <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it. It's a matter of execution. Richard's got hot at the line, man. Three or four. Woodbury again, keeps that ball alive with a tip out. And a three! Oh, it's the off fire! <laughs> Blocking foul on Ostertag. Whistle's not working, so he's got to stop his feet. Boy, in the ACC, they're going to overtime. North Carolina made a nice comeback in the last 115 to send that one to OT. I suppose Dean Smith used some time out there. <laughs> oh, boy. the roll. It's a crawler. 
There's his last play. Back to Reeves. Stepped right there. And uh, boy, you know, from this angle, when we saw it live, I thought it might have been a, an offensive foul. You look at there. Good call. Reeves in 80% from the line today. Somehow between last night and tonight, he's really worked on his free throw shooting. Nine of 11 for big country from the line. 21 for the game. Roy Williams, though, has the lead by one. Houston coach on Steve Woodbury in the second half. Look at all the makes. Only six for eight in the second half, including three three-pointers. And here's one of those trays. And what this was, I think this was off the missed free yeah. throw where he tipped it out, got it back, floated back out the outside. They hit him before the defense could recover. And there's those bench guys yep. you like. They're up there cheering. I like people that are involved in the game. Kansas with the ball and a one-point lead. Six and a half to go. Kansas. Oklahoma State, the winner of this one, will take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers tomorrow at high noon in the Big A championship game. Richard Scott, no. Out further from the basket normally, and Richard Scott takes that shot. He'd like to get in deeper. Blocked a little bit by Oster Tag, and who's got it? Richard Scott. And then a foul, I believe. That foul is on Pierce in the Big East, uh, an OT game between Georgetown and Seton Hall. When the Jayhawks have done a job rebounding, 38 to 21 in this ball game, the Cowboys had out-rebounded them a total of 11 in the two ball games, 10 in the one game at Lawrence. So How do you explain that. I, <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. You just get after it. <laughs> rebounding is about 80 percent effort, isn't effort, it? Desire, yeah. wanting. To, Scott back to the line. Missed his last one. That turned out to be a good deal for KU because they turned it into a three-pointer. Went into the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that one was ugly. An Oster tag. That's the drill that Kansas uses. Vaughn couldn't save it from going over and back. That's a drill, though, that Kansas used on a missed free throw. They tipped that ball back out. That time Oster tag tipped it too hard. Just getting ready to save us. Two possessions have got saved off this free throw. Robert, and he's fouled. Manzer, yeah, he's getting the congratulations because he made the pass. And that bench is up again. Well, at Kansas out high, free throw line extended. They got the pick off the high post coming up there. And then Manzer with a long pass. Yeah, that's about a 20-foot pass in there. Watch here. You see it. He gets picked off. Now they get the entry pass in there. It goes up straw. Now you get another look. Look how quick Manzer gets rid of that ball. That's the key right there. No sooner that ball hit his hands and it was gone. That looked like a second baseman on a yeah. double play. He turned it. He sure did. And avoided the slide. <laughs> two-point Oklahoma State lead. Folks, we're going overtime. Just relax. Just sit yeah. back and relax. We're going OT. You've had your money's worth already, but you're going to get an extra five minutes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. A little one-on-one. Woodbury lost the handle. Scott got it. All the way out to Gurley. Ten on the shot clock. Six on the shot clock. I'm not sure Richard Scott realizes that. Woodbury does. With two on the shot clock. Oh. The way he's been shooting here, I, I look for that to go. Yeah. So Oklahoma State trying to expand their lead. Under five to go. And Pierce walked with it. Eddie Sutton is complaining on that. He might have a, a good complaint because he said there was no possession of the basketball. He ever... well, turnover will give the ball to the Jayhawks. With less than five minutes to go, Kansas 23-0 when they have the lead. One and five when they don't. Right now, Kansas, a two-point deficit. That was just a sixth turnover for the Cowboys. Wow. The Jayhawks with ten. That's a fish Well fish. played by both teams. <laughs> Here they got Scott. Over Reeves. 
He's back in a little bit more familiar territory there, a little deeper. That's impressive. A guy 6'7", you can just take a 7-footer down on the blocks and shoot over him. Well, Works the, tight again. I think the key there was his quickness off the floor and get up over the top of big country. Seven ties in the game. the drop pass in right here Scott look how quick he's up you see before Reeves can ever get up off the floor he's just explosive it's right on top of it and Reeves picks up his third still shaking his head but boy you clearly saw it on the yeah. replay I think when you're that big you don't feel that little <laughs> contact it's just like well, what what I didn't do anything Ansley comes back out Rutherford back in and Pollard going to the line to try to give Kansas the lead again <laughs> Oklahoma State has 10 team foul, so Kansas and Roy Williams Club will be shooting two the rest of the way. KU six team fouls this half. Pressure game like this, and the this freshman Pollard, Doc Vaughn stepping up there, Keontae Roberts. Pollard is first points of the game, but it gives Kansas the lead again. We've had 11 lead changes in this one, Gary. Under four to go now. Well, I should say under four in regulation. <laughs> Pollard tipped it from behind. And he fouls. That's going to put Reeves on the line shooting one and one. That's the seventh team foul on KU. Reeves struggled at the line in last night's game with that bench. Well, oh, they're all anxious. Are we going to be in that championship game tomorrow against Nebraska or will it be Kansas? Reeves, 9 for 11 from the line here today. The front end of the 1-1, one one, pure. Man. This has to be the most improved free throw shooter in the tournament. As I said before, he'd come into last night's game shooting it, shooting it well. 75% of his last almost 50 shots. To correct his points, he now has 21 of the day, and Eddie Sutton's club is tied again. The last 351 is going to decide this. Unless we go OT. 51 to go, 65 65. With Gary Thompson, I'm Dave Armstrong. Semifinal action. The Phillips 66 Big A Conference basketball tournament at Kemper. Country ready to go back to work. And he's missed his last five shots. Hmm. Big country. And for Kansas, uh, Oh, I say never turn loose to somebody that's got the hot hand. Woodbury, 16 points here in the second half. He's trying to bring Woodbury up top right there. Good defense. Interesting, too, that Keontae Roberts, the one guarding him. Remember, Keontae has four fouls. Oh, nice spin. the whistle by Roy Williams. <laughs> More importantly, the whistle on the official, the whistle on Reeves, who picks up his four. Richard Scott has that great drop step. When he goes, he goes quick. And again, I say off the floor quick. Now, Cowboys got to be thinking with Scott up there, seal off. They've had it happen to him once, almost a second time on missed free throws. Kansas has been able to tip it out. He has you missed his last two. And you want to stand big when you check off. You get down low, that's where Kansas, you go to block off low, Kansas will go right over the top. And as you said, they work on that, tipping it out long. Three-point Kansas lead. Three and a half to go. Oklahoma State has been resilient all day. Burley for the tie. Got Vaughn. That's a final. North Carolina in overtime. Oh, 
A big scare from Wake Forest, but the Tar Heels pull it out. Reeves, Roy smile. I was going to say Reeves right there. Scott had him out front. Did a good job of staying down on the pump fake. Taken away by country. That's in the Pacific Coast Conference. Woo. No, I think Scott tried to go a little too quick that time. He lost control of the ball. There they got, excuse me, Dave, I was going to say they got the clear out for him. Howler thought he had the clean block. They call the foul on Scott. And Reeves will go back to the line again. Let's watch the Cowboys here. You see him going through. They clear out the side, and then they go down deep, and here's Pollard coming up. He gets the block up there. I couldn't tell down low there. He must have bumped him on the lower body. Reeves, 11 of 13 at the line. 11 of 13. 12 of 14. What was it again last night? Five for 14. <laughs> well, a little better. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look like a 58% uh, no. shooter on the year right now, does it? Incredible. He's got to put out a video on how to improve your free throw shooting overnight. Man, they're all pure, too. He's made his last nine. Unreal. So one point game, Kansas with the lead in the ball, 222 to go. Point differential makes it tougher to go to OT. Good cover up defensively, taken out of Woodbury's hands. There he is up for the rebound. He has been all over the place in the second half, doing it all. Scott gets it to Vaughn. Scott's got to settle down inside now. There's twice now. He's trying to do things too quick. Two on one. Robert Snow. Reeves had it taken away, and look out, Reeves going to go back to the line again. Well, he has been down more than a boxer in a Mike Tyson fight. Let's watch this fast break unfold here. They're going to have a two-on-one situation right there. Ball knocked away. Watch it right now. Two on got a trailer guy in the wing coming almost three on one. But look at the defensive man. He does a great job right there. He gets in the passing lane, forces him to take a shot. And that's the only thing you can do as a middleman when you got numbers against you. Try and make it difficult. The defender, Steve Woodbury. Right. 1.45 to go in this one. And Kansas has the one point lead. And we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Years ago, 1983. Dave, that was over Missouri in one of the great, great basketball games you've ever seen. I forget the score. It seemed like it was in the 100 points back and forth, but it was a tremendous basketball game. And Roy Combs came up big yep. in that tournament for the Cowboys. Steve Woodbury coming up big in this one for the Jayhawks. KU trying to return to that championship game for the eighth time. The Jayhawks have three Big A tournament championships. Ryan Reeves. Ten straight. <laughs> 10 straight free throws. 14 of his 26 points have come from the line. <laughs> Oklahoma State back on top by one. 145 to go. Boy, these are pressure free throws, too. Woodbury really coming to the ball. He's aggressive now offensively. The first half he wasn't doing much, but he's coming and wanting the basketball. And Kansas smart enough to get him the basketball. Nine on the shot clock. And this is going to be a solo job here, Dave. Wear him out for Woodbury. Doesn't get it. And the Cowboys have it with 1-0. To go and a one point lead. Try to run some clock off here, or just 
go to your offense. Noy netting Sutton, they'll run some time off the clock. They have a chance to really get a shot if they could early and have a two-for-one possession. But in this part of the game, a one-point lead, you want to make sure you get something good. You see the shot clock and the game clock on the right. Important thing now, you run that thing down as you, you get a shot off. Gurley comes up with the rebound. Now Kansas with a shot clock turned off can go for the win. Timeout KU. Roy Williams and the Jayhawks trail by one, but will have the opportunity to go for the win when we come back. Getting their defensive strategy. Leading by one, the Jayhawks have the ball. Go-to guy for the Jacks, got to be Steve Woodbury. Steve Woodbury was the one who hit the big three-pointer to beat Oklahoma State in Lawrence. From Kemper Arena in Kansas City, semifinals of the Phillips 66 Big A Conference Basketball Tournament. Kansas inbounding the ball, trailing by one. 26 seconds to go in regulation. Shot clock turned off. He's got Scott in the game. I was wondering if Oklahoma State might take a chance of following him and have the ball in their hands with a shot to either win or lose it themselves. Less than 10 to go. Woodbury looks up at the clock. Now Third here's side. the ball. Woodbury. Oh, doesn't get it. With the rebound. A tie-up. They call a tie-up with .2 on the clock. The arrow pointing towards Kansas. And Roy Williams wants some more time on the clock. The arrow pointing towards KU. Reeves came up with the rebound. He's celebrating, thinking that maybe the Cowboys in the championship game, but Kansas will have one last crack. The officials are going to come over and perhaps look at our clock to see how much time was left when they called the tie-up. That's how much time will be on the clock then. Reeves got the rebound and was tied up. And right now, the officials huddled over our monitor. Tracy Dittimore, our timeout coordinator, is going to uh, talk things over with them. Stanley Reynolds, the head referee, is going to ask for the replay, and they're turning the monitor now to show and here's the clock imposed in there. All right, there's the shot with 5.3. Now, Ostertag goes for the miss. Then Reeves. Now, let's see when he calls the time. Right there. 1.0, maybe 1.1, 1.2, somewhere in that neighborhood. But, you know, that is tough for a timer to get that call made in that short a time once he gives that signal. You want to see it again. Denny Friend, the official underneath, making the tie-up call. Again, Roy Williams studying that monitor as well. Boy, this is important because there's a lot of difference between that two-tenths of a second and a full now second. Watch the official on the baseline. Yeah. When Denny. his arms go up, right there, 1.2. That's the best we can guess. But then you've got the human element. That's scorekeeper. He's got to get it punched out when he sees him right there. So that's... They might, I'm going to guess, it. put a second Whether on the second. Clock. That's what I was going to say, Foster, right there. Or you could uh, split the difference and put five tenths more on there. That would split the difference. And we got a lot of discussion going on. Eddie Sutton doesn't like what he's getting. Georgetown winning over Seton Hall 76-71 in the Big East tournament. 69-68 our score here. Eddie Sutton not happy as they're going to put some time back on the clock. And it's going to give Kansas a chance on an inbounds play. Remember, they'll inbounds it underneath their own hoop. Well, I tell you, I'd want a big guy uh, on this throw-in. <laughs> and you got to look for something around the basket. So they have put .9 on the clock right now. Is that the definitive answer then? Bob Helmer is our producer. He's the one showing all the replays to Stanley Reynolds, our referee, and they have put .9 on the clock. So they have given the Jayhawks seven tenths more. It's probably as good as anything. You have to allow 
some time in there for, as you mentioned, the guy to punch the button to stop the clock. It's not electronically timed off the official. <laughs> well, this makes a lot of difference. There's, uh, people say, well, there ain't much difference between two tenths and nine tenths. There isn't a basketball game. And there sure is. Well, let's take a look at our Pizza Hut delivery of the game. And our delivery is a free throw from Brian Reeves, who has 15 of 17 from the line in this game. And Reeves with the Pizza Hut delivery of the game. Stanley Reynolds coming over to explain the rule now with Gary Thompson, our analyst. Kansas with possession, the tie-up. They had the uh, alternate possession while the arrow pointing towards KU. All right, Stanley Reynolds just mentioned to you, what was he saying? Well, he said, if you got it straight, you know what we're doing. And I said, yes, I think we do. You're giving them back the time because of the uh, jump ball situation. I didn't think there was any confusion about that. It was just a matter of looking at the uh, replay and getting the uh, time back on the clock. And I, I think, really, this nine-tenths is about as, as yeah. fair as you can be. I, I, I know Eddie Sutton uh, would like to have it on two-tenths or, or less. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the throw in the middle. Yeah. Time out. And there, the Jayhawks. excuse me, Jay, we I talked about a big guy on the ball. There's Eddie Sutton. Ian Phillips, it doesn't play much, but a big guy, he is on the ball out of bounds. So some more strategy going on now in that Kansas huddle. This is the Big A Conference Basketball Tournament, and it's brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of high-quality, super-clean athletic gasoline, and Trop Arctic All-Season Premium Motor Oil. The Big A Tournament on Raycom is brought to you in part by Pizza Hut. By Ford and by MCI. Kemper Arena, Kansas City, the site, the Big A tournament, the event. Kansas trailing by one with the basketball, point nine seconds to go. Really smart play on the part of Oklahoma State, I think. If some people would maybe think of putting Reed there. Our score, 69-68. Eddie Sutton's Cowboys have the lead. One last crack for the Jayhawks. Continue that thought, Dave. With Eon Phillips now on the ball, you get big country back in here to protect because you know Kansas is one of the things they got to be looking at as an option. Throw it up high right around the basket. Hope you don't get it in, you get a foul. The Jayhawks have no timeouts remaining. They'll have to inbounds it here. There's Scott. will move on to the championship game for only the third time in their history. Reeves, 27 points. 15 of those at the free throw line leads the Cowboys to victory. What a game. Roy Williams out congratulating Country who came alive at the free throw line hitting 15 17 and the Cowboys hold off the Jayhawks. So it'll be the second seeded Cowboys taking on the fourth seeded Nebraska Cornhuskers in tomorrow's final at high noon. There it was. CBS Sports presents the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show sponsored by Pete. The 1993-94 Kansas Jayhawks entered this season with a tough act to follow. After all, Kansas was coming off a season where the team won its third straight conference title and advanced on to the Jayhawks' fourth final appearance in all state seasons. More challenging, the Jayhawks were the season with only one returning starter. So, when Kansas opened this four straight wins at an NIT preseason tournament championship, they seem to have surprised everyone but themselves. It all got underway November 17th as the Jayhawks hosted Western Michigan in the first round of the preseason. And I... The Jayhawks have... He took it away from his man and lays it in. Handle got it back. B.J. Williams into Ostertag who takes it.
to the goal. The avenue was wide open. And he... This 69-50 win set up another matchup between the Jayhawks and the sixth-ranked California Golden Bears. This nationally televised game got the crowd on its feet early and often as Kansas led by 19 points at the half. Ben Murray steals. Woodbury gets it back to Scott, who stopped it. Holy smoke. Richard Scott added 20 points as KU won 73 to 56 and advanced on to New York in a semifinal matchup with Minnesota. Scoring on the right baseline for KU. This battle in Madison Square Garden pitted two ranked teams in the Jayhawks and Golden Gophers. Vaughn forces Vaughn oh, what a quick move. It down and scores with six seconds left on the clock. This 75 to 71 win moved the Jayhawks into the NIT Tournament Championship game for the third time in KU history. The Big Apple has been good to Roy Williams and his Kansas Jayhawks. In 1990, KU shocked the nation's number one and number two ranked teams en route to the NIT preseason championship. Now they faced a red-hot Massachusetts team that had just knocked off the nation's number one team and defending national champion, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Six Jayhawks scored in double figures, led by senior Richard Scott's 16. The 86-75 win gave the Hawks their second preseason NIT title, making Kansas the only school to ever accomplish this feat. After an exhibition double overtime loss to the Australian national team, the fourth-ranked Jayhawks hosted the seventh-ranked Temple Owls. Despite Steve Woodbury's career-high 24-point performance, John Chaney's Owls knocked off Kansas 73-59. Just three nights later, the Jayhawks traveled to Chicago, Illinois to face the DePaul Blue Demons. Once again, Steve Woodbury led Kansas with 23 points, and Calvin Rayford added a career-high eight assists, sparking a 25-6 Jayhawk run as Kansas knocked off the Blue Demons 79-74. Pearson, Rayford. After beating Washburn University, it was on to ACC country to face the North Carolina State Wolfpack. On this night, reserve guard Greg Gurley's star shone bright as he connected five for five from behind the three-point line. The 74 to 57 win was KU's 11th straight non-conference road victory. Back at Allen Fieldhouse, Patrick Ritchie established season highs in three different categories against Arkansas Little Rock. Ritchie recorded 20 points, six rebounds, while knocking down eight field goals in this game. The 98-63 win marked Roy Williams' 140th career victory at Kansas. The sixth-ranked Jayhawks traveled to Atlanta, Georgia on December 18th for the Cuppenheimer Classic, where they faced the Georgia Bulldogs. KU placed four players in double figures, winning the game 89-79. The Jayhawks then faced an outmatched Furman team, beating the Paladins 101-60 and a tune-up for one of the most anticipated games of the year against the Indiana Hoosiers. This classic matchup lived up to its pregame hype. Todd Leary with the ball. Over to Bailey. Bailey for three. Good! High ball game! Bailey scored 30 points in this contest, but the real hero would be a freshman from Kansas. Now six seconds. Shot Vaughn with the ball. Three seconds, a shot by Jock. Good! A three-pointer! It's over! The 86-83 overtime victory took Kansas into the Christmas break with an 11-1 record. Then it was on to Kansas City in the Golden Harvest Classic. After beating the Rhode Island Rams 73-60 in round one, Kansas advanced on to the championship game against Southern Methodist University. Tied at the half, the Jayhawks found new life in the second stanza to beat the Mustangs 84-64 and capture the tournament championship. Richard Scott was named tournament MVP, and freshman John Vaughn once again found himself on an all-tourney team. 
In January, the Jayhawks christened the new year with successive victories over UNC Asheville and SMU. Then, Billy Tubbs brought his Oklahoma Sooners to town to open Big A play. Take Oklahoma along to launch it normally. A steal by Ritchie. Patrick knocks it into backcourt. He goes for the stop. Did a fine defensive job on Webster. Put a lot of pressure on him. Barry for three. He hit it. Head of the circle. Steve Woodbury's 26 points keyed the 94-84 victory. The Jayhawks had now won 12 straight games, their longest streak since winning 19 in a row during the 1990 season. The Oklahoma win vaulted Kansas to number one in the college basketball polls. But things would get progressively worse for Kansas when Richard Scott suffered a severe concussion early in the second half against Kansas State. The Cats held close and then shocked the number one Jayhawks at the end of regulation. Bean goes to work against Vaughn. Bean drives, shoots, scores! A two-pointer by Bean! Kansas then hit the road to play Iowa State in always tough Hilton Coliseum. Greg Ostertag led the Hawks with 16 points in the 78-71 victory. On January the 26th, the Jayhawks returned home to face the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Reserve Sean Pearson nailed five three-pointers to keep Kansas close into the final minutes. With 10 seconds remaining in overtime and OSU at the line with a chance to seal the victory, many of the Kansas faithful ducked out of the field house early. Unfortunately for those fans, they probably didn't make it to the car radios in time to hear one of the most dramatic last-second wins in field house history. in Boulder, the Hawks headed for Columbia, Missouri. After six consecutive losses to the Jayhawks, the Tigers held off a strong second-half Kansas rally to preserve the 79-67 victory. Now 19-3 on the year, KU returned home for their 20th victory of the season against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. With the 94-87 win, Kansas became the first NCAA Division I team to record 20 wins on this season. The Hawks then traveled to Manhattan, Kansas, where they had won 10 straight games on Wildcat turf. Steve Woodbury and Greg Ostertag combined for 31 points to extend KU's Manhattan winning streak to 11. As if their first meeting wasn't exciting enough, the Oklahoma State-Kansas game in Stillwater provided another nail-biter. Thompson ties it. OSU then pulled away in the overtime, handing Kansas a 63-59 loss. The red-hot Missouri Tigers came to town in late February. While freshman guard Jock Bond scored a career-high 21 points, it wasn't enough to hold off the Tigers down the stretch. Then, three days later in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Jayhawks nearly pulled off a miraculous second-half comeback. Two attempt, Woodbury. The Huskers sealed the Jayhawks' fate at the line, securing the 96-87 victory. The Jayhawks ended their three-game losing streak by blasting the Colorado Buffaloes at home, 106-62. Then, it was time to say goodbye to the Kansas Seniors before their final home game against the Iowa State Cyclones. The Hawks sent their four seniors outright with a 97-79 win. Corner, swish, a two-pointer by Patrick Ritchie. Standing ovation for Patrick Ritchie, and now... But there was still business at hand. The Hawks traveled to Norman, Oklahoma, and after a strong second-half rally, beat the Sooners 84-81. to Shot clock as Williams on the baseline takes it. I'm sure Roy would have liked him to use a little clock here. 
The Jayhawks took their 24-6 record on to Kansas City for the Big 8 tournament. After knocking off the K-State Wildcats in round one, Kansas and Oklahoma State met for the third time this year, and once again, it was a classic matchup that went down to the wire. And now with a record of 25 and seven, the Jayhawks head off to the Southeast Regional in Lexington, Kentucky. For the KU Basketball Tournament Special, I'm Mike Benito. Well, good job, Mike, putting that all together. And Coach, uh, what a year. Uh, what will you remember most about this season? Oh, I try to remember the good times because most of the time all I remember is the losses. But uh, Indiana. Uh, Indiana game, Jock shot there, Steve shot against Oklahoma State. Um, the NIT? NIT, the preseason, winning that thing, and uh, a fantastic group of kids. Yeah. Three seniors who've uh, been with me for a long time. It really meant a lot to me personally and to our program. Uh, there will be a lot of good memories. I just uh, try to make sure that I push those losses as far back as I can. All right, Coach, so you go against the Tennessee-Chattanooga. Let's take a look at this uh, bracket in the southeast regional. I tell you, this is uh, 